Hi there, my name's Nathan Kiley, um, and my job is a drag queen. So I am also known as Topsy Redfern. Um, and I'm here today uh, doing a workshop with you guys. Um, it's a partnership between East London Cares and the other organisation, I need to look at my phone to double check, is the oh, St Margaret's House. So they've uh, programmed some workshops. So I'm here to do a workshop today. <coughs> That does um, a couple of things really. We're going to do a makeup tutorial. So I'm going to show you how I transform from Nathan into Topsy. Uh, but also um, explain a bit about being a gay man today and growing up as a gay man. And a little bit about the appropriate words that we use to describe different people in the LGBTQI plus community. Because I think for a lot of people there can be confusion a misunderstanding and fear about what words to use. Um, so, I'll just have a jolly old uh, 40 minutes with you all. Um, oh look, my jumper matches my um, picture. That's unplanned coincidence. Okay, so makeup tutorial. Now, uh, lots of drag queens would block up their eyebrows, cover them over and draw them on higher. But um, I prefer a less draggy look and a more natural look. Um, that's just my, my style of drag. Um, shall I show you a picture? Here's a picture. There's, there's me as Wonder Woman. There we go. Confusing straight men all around the UK. <laughs> now I met some of you at the uh, post Pride party <laughs> for East London Cares, so I'm really excited to have visions of loads of octogenarians stealing their wives' makeup bag and uh, becoming drag queens, but you better not come for my gigs, otherwise it'll be trouble. Uh, so we should start off with what you need. So the only thing I really spend a lot of money on for my face makeup are the foundation sticks, the Cryolan sticks. They're quite heavy uh, because they need to cover the uh, stubble, etc. And then everything else is the kind of things that you'd find in a normal woman's makeup bag, mascara, eye, liquid eyeliner, uh, eyeliners, lip liners, uh, lipstick. Um, I have translucent powder and uh, a stargazer white powder as well. Um, and some lip gloss and that's oh, eyelash glue. Fake eyelashes as big as you like, and that's kind of that's kind of the basics. But I'll explain as we go. <laughs> um, right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to concentrate on the areas of my face that need that are normally in light, and those that would have some shade. So I'm going to try and slightly change the shape of my face and make it more feminine uh, by focusing on the light and the dark areas. <clears throat> so it is very confusing, LGBT, QI+, etc, etc, um, because language changes. I remember when I was growing up that in the playground the word queer was a massive term of abuse. And yet now this is the word that's been reclaimed and it's the current kind of trendy word which is used by the LGBTQI plus community. And it's a good word because it not only refers to sexuality differences but also gender differences. So it's a very inclusive term. So queer can cover a wide umbrella of people. Um, I'm learning to embrace the word queer but it still makes me flinch a little bit inside just because was such a nasty word when I was growing up. So even though I am starting to use the word queer, for me <coughs> the word gay is a more um, comfortable term. What made me sad was as I got older and I was teaching in schools for a while, uh, you'd hear the word gay. The meaning of that would change. It used to, you know, it used to mean happy, jolly, and then it kind of transferred to being a word used to describe um, homosexual men and then it got to the point where in playgrounds um, 
all kids would describe anything that was nasty or anything that was bad or disgusting as gay. Uh, look, you're so gay. Uh, uh that bike's so gay. Uh, uh, that you, uh, that, uh, your trainers are really gay. Do you know what I mean? So that's how, how language was shifting and what was reclaimed as a positive word. You know, the word becomes infective and, and becomes negative and, you know, but I'm still, gay man is my, the thing that I like identifying as. So do you guys know what LGBTQI plus, what, what are all the letters actually? LGBTQQIA, they're the letters, I think. So we've got LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, transsexual, queer, questioning, asexual, intersex. I think that I got all of those in. Um, but the letters keep expanding, it seems, but that's just because as a community, uh, the queer community is becoming more inclusive and more understanding as we evolve. Um, you know, often people see it as one big group of people, but it's not, it's lots of different groups of people. Um, uh, so this is the gay flag, can you see there? And as a community, we were all involving, which it's, it's, it's developed now so that we've got these chevrons that have been included here. This is called the Progress Pride flag. So we've got the black and brown chevrons, so that recognises the fact that the um, um, BAME communities haven't been represented in queer culture before. We've got the, the pink and the blue chevrons, that recognises the trans community and people who have fluctuations in gender identity, etc. And then the white triangle there represents the people that have been lost in the HIV crisis. So this flag is more inclusive and people feel more represented by by this, which is which is a good thing. You know. I think pride is so important still. Um this is the toughest bit to cover up. I find it really difficult to hide my moustache. So I've done the kind of light areas, and now I'm just going to cover up the areas, the rest of the areas with a more skin tone. Yeah, people often think pride is just a party, an excuse to, for people to get drunk, you know. you, I've, I hear a lot of straight people saying, oh, what's the point, pride, we should have a straight pride, things are fine, you don't need it. But in... In truth, there isn't equality. I can't hold a partner's hand down the street without being stared at, without having things shouted at, without being sniggered at. I was a victim of a hate crime at work. During lockdown, I've been working behind your Y bar. A guy leaned out of a white van, uh, shouted, effing gays at us. Um, I went to take a picture of his van because it had wicks written on the side uh, and then he, he'd seen, seen me do that so he came back and was really aggressive and violent and it looked like he was going to beat me up. Uh, so my colleagues had to step in and help me. Um, and that's just something that happened from minding my own business at work. But um, statistically, I've got some statistics here. Statistically, <coughs> how many people do you think, how many people do you think uh, LGBT people have experienced a hate crime in the last 12 months? One in how many? Uh, one in 80, one in a thousand, one in five. One in five, one in five people experienced a hate crime. Recently as well, <coughs> in Poland, I don't know if you've seen, in Poland, whole towns and areas have declared themselves LGBT free zones. This is in the European Union. Countries 
feel that they're allowed to do that and get away with it. And the European Union have done very minimal to stop it. So we're not, you know, things are, things are not equal. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so we've done some light areas. We've done our skin tones. We're going to just do some dark areas now. So I hope you're managing to keep up and doing... I'm sure you're doing an excellent job. <coughs> you're doing better than me. I really can't multitask. I'm finding it really difficult to talk to you and contemplate what I'm doing at the same time. This is when you realise that I am a man because I can't multitask. There we go. Uh, uh, uh. So, here we go. So, just on the areas that would naturally be in shadow. So, we're trying to create a more kind of pointy shape, really. Can blend that in. I'm gonna use my fingers, I think, for that. I've only just started using this thing. I'm not too convinced about it. I normally used to just get in there with my fingers and blend it all in. Um, yeah, but growing up as, as a gay man, even though I had parents that were cabaret performers, they had gay friends. Um, I knew coming out was a really difficult process and just growing up as a gay man, even if you're part of a loving family, you grow up and you do feel different and to everyone else and like there's no one else around you and that's made it especially hard because like when I was growing up there was no one on the television that was a real positive representation. We had Dale Winton, we had... Um, who else was on there? I'm struggling to think now. Can you think of anyone that was on television when you were young? Uh, gay, lesbians, etc. It tended to be figures, fun, camp, people to be laughed at. Or if it was in stories, it would be people that had really sad and tragic lives and were found dead in ditches and died lonely. And um, So you turn on the television and there's like no positive image for what your future could be. She's quite bleak when you're growing up. You don't feel part of a community of people, even though you've got a family, maybe. You don't feel part of a community of people that are exactly the same as you. You feel like slightly like a black sheep or an outsider. Uh, and then, even though my parents are very liberal, can you see how I'm like, changing the shape? Just, you know, making, making myself a bit more pointy. <clears throat> Even though my parents were li really liberal. Uh, 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 uh. A bit of light under the lip there. Because women's chins are slightly more pointy. There we go. So can you... This is a little bit basic shape. So even though my parents were liberal, um... They come out with homophobic things when I was growing up sometimes, like, you know, someone will be on the telly and they'll be like, oh my God, look at that big puff. And even though their intention isn't that serious, like when you're a kid, you're like, oh my God, I'm a big puff. My parents don't love me. I can't ever tell them. I'm, they're going to reject me. And <laughs> you, you hold on to these things and um, you build up that, this self-hate and self-shame about the gay part of you uh, and the... Uh, especially the feminine feminine side of me, I was always really ashamed of. I used to have um, the fun taken out of me for being a bit girly and, you know, like, my mum's friends would be like, oh, I'm a bit worried about that lad. We need to get him down doing football. Because I used to be sit, sit there crocheting a blanket or something. And uh, there's this sense that anything feminine that I liked was shameful. I remember I used to play with Lego and cars, but I also wanted to play with My Little Ponies and the pink, fluffy, sparkly things. And I think a lot of young boys do. And then you, but you're taught, you're taught to like um, that, that that's wrong. That's not what boys do. Boys have got to do X, Y, and Z, and it's girls that do that. But you know, and if we want like something colourful and sparkly, it's just it's just natural. But um, you gradually become ashamed of that side of you, and that kind of stays with you. 
for a really long time. So even after you come out of the closet and you tell people you're gay, there's kind of this hangover of, 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 of negativity, which takes can take people a long time to, to come to terms with. That's taken me a really long time to um, become really proud of myself and comfortable with myself and tell people I'm gay with absolutely no shame. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, before, you know, I tell people and it'd be embarrassing and I'm like, I'm, I'm no longer embarrassed to tell people. I'm very proud of that. And I think part of the reason is that doing drag has helped me embrace my femininity, celebrate it. I stand on stages, I can make people laugh. I can entertain people um, and I really explore this feminine side and celebrate it for it. And so it's allowed me to become comfortable being a man who is also feminine. I don't see, I don't understand why these two things have to be different. What a man is, is lots of different things. Um, and it's taken me like a, a really long time to get there. I'm 39, nearly 40, but I, am, I have now and I'm, I'm, I'm really, happy and comfortable in my own skin, uh, uh, which is really important, I think. Um, so I've just put some white powder over the light bits, uh, just to set them. Um, this is Stargazer, it's very good white powder. Uh, and some. this is some Alikna translucent powder. I'm gonna put that over the darker bits. There we go. I think it's all red for some reason today. I don't know why that's happening. So I hope you're keeping up. Feel free, if I'm speeding ahead, just to pause. <laughs> pause the video and catch up. But I'm sure you're doing a fantastic job there. <laughs> okay, so. I know it looks a bit of a mess, but this is kind of a base now on which to build with a slight, slightly more feminine shape. But I try to make the nose thinner the cheek a uh, bit slightly more uh, of a uh, jawline and a cheek indentation. I can't find the right words for any of this. Um, and the next stage for me then is to take just some um, bronzer and a bronzer brush and just the shadowy dark areas that we did. I'm just gonna reinforce with a bit of bronzer. Here we go. Like this. Um, I really recommend a podcast to you all, and I found it really educational, interesting, fascinating. I've cried and laughed over it. It's Susie Ruffle, the uh, comedian who happens to be lesbian has done a series of uh, podcast interviews about people's coming out stories it's called out with Susie Ruffle and they're hilarious moving interviews and uh, again this just shows you like how coming out is not just a one-off event but it is a lifetime and you know when, when you when you grow up feeling an outsider feeling different uh, feeling ashamed how it is a lifetime process to um to kind of be comfortable and accept accept who you are which is is sad but the world is changing the world is massively changing it is moving forward um for example um i do this thing called drag queen story time believe it or not so um i go to schools and nurseries and libraries uh, and i basically i'm just taking a brown eyebrow pencil sharpening it 
and I read stories to kids about uh, inclusivity, being different, uh, being nice to people, be kind, loving ourselves, etc. So it's a really positive, fun uh, experience and it's interesting, it's so heartwarming that there's loads of really liberal, I'm going to look in the mirror, not here because I can see better in the mirror, liberal parents that really want their children to come to Drag Queen Storytime and to learn about diversity. And I think one one thing that really hit me about how far things have come was, can, um, you all know Alan Turing, I'm sure, he was the um, famous code breaker of World War One, and not only was he a national hero, his code breaking really turned the tide of the war, uh, Second World War, uh, at Bletchley Park. He also happened to be a homosexual, and he faced <coughs> the jo a choice between uh, prison and chemical castration when he was caught in homosexual acts. Um, so he was chemically castrated, and this is um, it makes people cry just talking about it. Um, and this is someone who, you know, did so much for the c country. Um, I think posthumously he has been pardoned, etc., and he's now on a fifty pound note. Um, but um, I do drag queen story time, and it was really nice because. Uh, I, I do it, we did one at the National Portrait Gallery, I've done it for two years now, and um, it was just, I, I just put some mascara, by the way, over the top of that, just to make the eyebrows a bit stronger. Um, and we did Drag Queen Storytime at the National Portrait Gallery, uh, a world-respected institution, um, under the picture portrait of Alan Turing, and it just made me think, oh god, I could cry again. <laughs> Just about how, how far things are coming, like how he would never imagine that a gay man, myself, could be sat openly gay with loads of children and families in an institution like that. Because only, God, a, f a few decades earlier, you know, he had such horrific things happen to him just because of being a gay man. Um, so that shows that things are really, really moving forward. And I think things are much better th for younger people today, which is great. But they can be much better. And I think that just means being nicer to people, even if they're different. I honestly think that there's just, people aren't kind enough to each other. If everyone was kind, you don't have to agree with anyone. You don't have to, um, believe what they believe you don't have to approve of their choices in life or lifestyles etc but you know we want people to be nice to us let's just be nice to other people um okay liquid eyeliner this is always a hard bit to get it right and not to have it smudge everywhere i'm just going to concentrate so i'm assuming you've done your face and you've put your eyebrows on um and then i'm just going to extend this out <laughs> so we're just trying to make the eye look bigger really getting them even is always the tricky part and try not to open my eye because otherwise I will get a big smudge higher up. Ah! Because of lockdown, I've not been doing my face a lot. And I have started gigging again, but I feel like I've, I feel like I've lost the touch of how to do all this. I'm sure it's practice. I'll get back into it again. Oh, 
oh there we go that thing happened that I just didn't want to happen it's all right we can uh, we can disguise it and then we're gonna do underneath as well I hope you're surviving lockdown and it hasn't been too traumatic I think it's great that these kind of things are around to keep us all busy and occupied. There we go. Now I know this looks a bit of a mess and I, I don't worry if it's not too accurate because I will be going over it with coloured powder and stuff. <laughs> okay. Just let that dry. Oh, I can't believe I smudged it. Ah! Um, and I'm going to put some mascara on the eyelashes. Here we go. It'd be great if uh, you guys do try drag makeup, even girls. There are actually female drag queens, uh, and there are a lot of girls that go out now with very draggy makeup. Uh, so if anyone does copy Topsy style or lack of style, do take a photo, post it on the social media, on Facebook or Instagram. My name's Topsy Redfern, T-O-P-S-I-E, Redfern as in red and the bush. That's my porn name, by the way. I didn't really want to become a drag queen. It kind of happened to me against my will. I did not know what to call myself. Uh, so I used my porn name. Um, I've not been uh, a pornographic artist. I don't think I'd get much money. But um, it's where you take your first pet and your mother's maiden name. So my first pet was Black Labrador called Topsy. Actually, it was my mum's first pet. Actually, it's quite a tragic story. Topsy, um, when my twin sister and I were born, uh, uh, basically, was my mum's little baby, and she was so jealous of us, she wanted to, like, kill us, so she wasn't allowed in the same room. And uh, she was only young, but the vet said but she died. And the vet said that she'd just died of a broken heart and given up the world to live, because we were around. So that's the um, dark story of where Topsy came from. Um, yeah, I've got a twin sister, actually. I used to cry because she was allowed to wear pink and I wasn't. It used to break my heart. We used to have like fist fights over who was going to get the pink Mr. Kipling fondant fancy. Uh, I used to like be stealing her pink tutu and running around in it. My nan said when uh, I became a drag queen, Are you jealous that your brother makes a prettier girl than you do? She was always so, so nice, my nan. Okay, so I've got this palette of colours. This is a really nice one. This is from my best friend, Miria. Uh, it, it's a Amorph James uh, Charles palette, apparently. I think they're quite expensive. I normally buy the cheap ones, but this is, as, as it was a present, you see, it's uh, my lovely best friend splashed out on me. Aren't I lucky? Okay, so uh, what colour should we do? I think I'm gonna go purpley. So I'm going to take a dark purple and just do the crease of the eye. Right, this is where I try and cover the smudge. The problem for me is that even, I was really good at art at school and stuff, but I've never been neat and precise. It's always been a bit smudgy and messy, and I think sometimes for, for makeup, the neater you are, the better. But I just end up layering things on until 
it looks neat. So I never really intended to become a drag queen, it kind of happened as if by accident. My parents were cabaret singers and they tried to put me off as much as possible. Uh, and then made me go to uni, so I did a degree in English Literature at Durham University. Uh, I usually put colour under the eye as well. And then I went to drama school and studied musical theatre. I, sp I remember at, me at drama school they were always trying to butch me up as well. But it's interesting, all the roles I get are not about being neutral and being able to be manly and butch. It's because I'm a bit girly and feminine and um, that's kind of my niche and that's where I get work. I've played Ugly Sister in Pantomime a zillion times. Um, I played Mary Sunshine in the musical Chicago in the West End. I think that's what got me into drag because at, at the same time I was living with, living with a drag queen. And he was like, babe, you've got, you've got to be a drag queen. You could make some really good money out of it. Uh, you'd be really good, etc, etc. And I, I, I was thinking, a drag queen, how tacky and down market. Absolutely not. I'm in a West End musical. Um, but then I got to a point in between acting jobs where I was a bit sick of teaching and hospitality, working in hospitality. I'm just taking a lighter colour, light pink, putting it slightly higher than the purple. So it was trying to create a bit of depth. I'm going to put a little light pink under here. So he persuaded me to enter this competition called Drag Idol, which I did. It's a nationwide competition around um, a big proportion of gay bars in the UK, and I ended up coming second, which was brilliant. Uh, so then it was basically a new day job, and it's been a new career. It's kind of the dream I never dreamed, and I feel so lucky. It's helped me become a better performer. I get to perform usually five or six times a week. Uh, it's my own show, I'm not answering to anyone, and I can still audition and do acting jobs as well. Before lockdown I was doing, playing a gender queer fury in a house music opera at the Young Vic called Orpheus. Hopefully that will be happening next year. Um, but so yeah. And like during lockdown, it's been like so handy. I just put in a bit of extra white there as well, uh, just to make the uh, top of the eyelid pop. I've never done a make makeup video before. I feel like an influencer on YouTube. How are you doing? Are you keeping up? As I say, feel free to pause at any time. Um, um, I'm just taking a little brush and this is my white foundation stick as well and I'm just putting a bit of white here. You don't have to separate the top and the bottom. You kind of just, um, the more you do it, you kind of learn about your face shape and what makes you look more feminine. So quite often if I have to do someone else's face, it doesn't quite work because their, their face shape is different. So it's kind of, about learning what works for you. I think I can just, just about get away with using my own eyebrows. A lot of men's eyebrows are quite low. But I do think my shape is all right. And they're not too low. So you do, I do have some space between here. Uh, women have naturally more space, which is why drag queens end up drawing them on. If you do want to blot your eyebrows out, basically you take some glue, you can take some eyelash glue. You, you glue them, get the back of a spoon, push the eyelashes up and it's set and then you put your foundation and powder over the top but it's a, a lengthy process and as I said I like, I like that natural look of people you know people know I'm a drag queen but sometimes they don't know sometimes it's like oh is that a woman or is it a drag queen I like being on the edge of that okay here we go I'm going to do... 
yeah, I was saying that in lockdown, like, I'm so glad because if I was just working as an actor in, in theatre and stuff, um, not that there are enough roles I'm right for, but I, I wouldn't have worked this whole time. And at least, like, I'm, I've been able to do some stuff on Zoom, like cabaret, the cabaret world has started working again. I've been out performing, I've got four gigs again this week, and like, I would honestly have gone mad. Something weird about us performers, like we have to do it. It's like part of who we are and it's part of our identity. If we don't get to do it, we just get like really miserable. <laughs> so, yay for being a drag queen. Um, I didn't bring any tissue. So I just need to wipe my lips. The, bit, the foundation, I will use this. Okay. Just before I put some lip liner on. Being a drag queen is weird. You can work all over the country, here, there, and everywhere. Have lots of interesting experiences. One of my favourite experiences. Um, I'm just going to do some um, lip liner. Uh, I was on the way to a gig in Clapham, and uh, re in recent years, I, I, I drive to most gigs just because it's nice. You can get ready at home. You don't have to lug your big bag of everything. But uh, I. I'm going to have to talk and not move my lips. I'm just going to draw my lips on now a bit bigger. So I'm trying to accentuate the lip. So I have my big case. My big case on the tube. And I lift it on there. So I went to the gig. I ended up doing my gig. I made like a costume out of toilet rolls and anything the audience had. So it became part of the show. It was quite fun. And uh By the time I'd finished the gig, it transpired that I'd caused a lockdown of the whole tube system for an hour during rush hour, and the police thinking it was a major terrorist incident because a bag had been left on the tube, and it was my bag. Uh, so, uh, apparently it cost the LTFL 160,000 lost passenger hours in revenue or something. Uh, I was terrified about going to collect my bag. But uh, when I got there, the pl I thought Cresta Dick was going to like shout at me. But I got there and then they were all laughing because they thought it was a bomb. When they opened it, it was like fake tits in there and high heeled shoes, etc, etc. So thank goodness the police did have a sense of humour about it. Mm -mm -mm. So, drawing them on the big bigger, I might just do a bit of a darker liner underneath to just create a bit more depth to the lip. Very nice, I'm going to uh, stick some lipstick over the top of that. I haven't really got the shape even there, have I? I just layer up loads of different colours of lipstick until I get a shade that I'm happy with. There we go. Sometimes people put a lighter colour as well, just to uh, give again a bit more depth. So at the top, I'm just going to get my foundation. And you see it kind of looks like a bit of a lightness on the... Uh, the lip. So, a bit of colour on the cheeks. Gonna use again. It's just I don't have like set colours. I just kind of layer things up until I'm kind of happy. Put a bit of pink on there. Maybe a bit of red as well. Um, <clears throat> and I just keep going over things until uh, well, I think I it on the floor. Where did my foundation go? Uh, on the floor. Until the colours like, a bit balanced, and so I'm just putting a bit more foundation over. Something, something I've seen people do 
on RuPaul's Drag Race as well is put a little bit of light foundation here. That kind of seems to make the lips pop a bit. I'm just going to put a bit more white here as well. Just to kind of make these look like my cheekbones are standing out. And you can take your translucent powder and just pop it all over. It just kind of evens out. Well, this isn't really translucent powder, I don't think, actually. It's like, it's like a blending powder, so I think over, if, if it's over everything, it just kind of um, blends it, makes it more look more even. Like it's one thing. Oh, we're getting there, aren't we, guys? Well done. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take my eyelashes. Um, I need to go and get some, actually. These are just um, from the local weave shop in Dalston Junction. I need to get, I usually wear some bigger ones, but lockdown, I'm, I haven't had a chance to stock up on my supplies for lots of things. Or the finances, unfortunately. If we have second lockdown, I'm going to have to go on the game. If any of the East London Cares clientele are interested, then do contact me. I'll offer you very cheap rates. OAP discount. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Stick this on. Um, so if you didn't see, I just put um, some eyelash glue on the edge of the eyelash. A lot of people find it very hard to put these on. I just like shove it on and move it around. But lots of people are there with like tweezers and being really delicate. I just, you know, bind where the edge of the eyelash and the eyelid meet, wiggle it around. Quite often people need help putting on eyelashes, so. Bob, if you're at this stage, go and get Mildred. I know she might have the shakes, but tell her to stay still as she can to put your eyelashes on for you, all right? So we have eyelashes. Um, oh, she's nearly here, babes. Put some lip gloss on. Have I got some lip gloss? There's some lip gloss. Just makes your lip a bit shiny. Um, what was I going to do that? Okay, we've got like two minutes left. So, I hope I've explained things clearly enough. Um, I hope I've revealed a bit about um, LGBT culture, but what words to use. If in doubt, just ask people. People aren't afraid to explain and educate and tell you how they identify, etc. Um, but I think most importantly, let's all be kind to each other. Um, here we go. Uh, I've got long hair, so I tend to use my own hair rather than a wig. I would normally spend a bit more time judging it, but there we go. And I think we should put some earrings on just to uh, finish the look. If I have any at hand, where are they? Uh, 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 uh. No, we won't put earrings on. But um, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. One quick tip, I've got some L'Oreal Root Spray because men have square, more square shapes. I always put a tiny bit of root, root spray on just to create, create more of a round shape on the face. So I've been Nathan slash Topsy. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope to be seeing you all 
at a Zoom event soon. Uh, stay happy, uh, stay safe, uh, and send me your final drag pictures. Okay, one more, one more. Bye.